Hello everyone, this is Isidore, and in this guide I'll walk you through the process of setting up your very own outpost in Kenshi. It's kind of a whole undertaking, so I'm splitting this guide up into three different parts. Location, preparation, and construction. Building an outpost isn't a necessary part of playing Kenshi. You can just go around the world and live like a nomad, but where's the fun in that? Having your own settlements means somewhere to rest up and heal after battle, somewhere where you can mass-produce food and medical supplies, a place where resources are constantly produced with which you can craft weapons and armor, and thus have the ability to rapidly train a weaponsmith, armorsmith, or crossbowsmith to the max, and of course it's a refuge kept safe by high walls and turrets. It's incredibly rewarding to have your own settlement, but setting one up isn't easy. I'll break it down into a few steps in this guide for your convenience. Side note, you can also set up mini bases in existing settlements, which I highly recommend you start with to not only get a feel for base building, but also to give yourself somewhere to store your excess goods and special gear, as well as rest and train. Step 1. Location. If there's one thing that's important when building a new outpost, it's figuring out where to put it. You may have to do some exploring to figure out where you want to settle, as just looking at the map is unlikely to tell you how good or bad a given area is. For one, you will want an iron node and a copper node in your city. Iron is more important early on, but you'll need copper for the higher end stuff. Bear in mind, nodes have a quality value too, which you can see by clicking on it. Higher is better, but it only affects how fast you can mine from that node, not anything else. Plus, with higher tech, you can get iron directly out of the dirt, giving you more ability to settle in places that don't have an iron node. You can't get copper through this method, however. Next, biomes. Every area on the map has its own biome, being some variety of arid, green, or swamp. Green biomes are the easiest to live in, as they allow you to grow cotton, hemp, wheat, and green fruit with full effectiveness, giving you not only a fabric industry to develop regardless of where you choose to settle, but also fantastic food production. Arid biomes are next. They're the only areas you can grow cacti in, and to a significantly lesser extent hemp and wheat, giving you everything you need to survive, technically. The fact that hemp and wheat have reduced production speeds in arid areas really sucks, but you can combo wheat and cacti into dust witches, which are a great food item, somewhat making up for arid's otherwise lackluster growth stats. Finally, swamp biomes only let you grow hemp and rice, but at max effectiveness. Probably the least effective biome to settle in, giving you a better fabric and medicine industry than arid, but since you can only produce rice here, your cooking options are extremely limited. At least cooking rice is really easy. Green is admittedly the best biome, as it lets you grow the widest variety of stuff, and it lets you produce food cubes with green fruit and wheat, which are the most nutritious food items you can reasonably mass produce. However, if you decide to settle on the border between two zones, you can actually build your base across that border, in which case your base covers two biomes. You can hypothetically even have a base with three different biomes doing this, although finding a spot that meets all your requirements and exists at the intersection of three zones with three different biomes might be quite hard. In addition, you want to look at a local area's fertility. Fertility works hand in hand with biomes. Biomes dictate what you can grow. Fertility dictates how fast it grows. Unless fertility is 0%, then nothing grows there. Higher is better, try to get as close to 100% as possible. You may be wondering how to exactly check a area's biome or fertility. Well, you do that through prospecting. That's the button on the far bottom right hand of the UI. When clicking that, your character will prospect the local area, generating a map for you indicating the spread of resources in your immediate surroundings. The higher the science skill of the prospector, the larger this map. If you want to train someone to be your primary prospector, the best way to do this is to have that person do research for you, or create electrical components at an electrical workbench, something which you can do to increase the value of the copper you're likely already mining. 
Greenlanders and Hive Princes are the best prospectors, generally, as they have a bonus to gaining science skill. At the top part of the prospecting window, the most important thing to look at is the environment, which shows you what type of biome you are in. Wind speed can also be relevant, as you might not want to settle somewhere that has little to no wind, but prospecting captures a moment in time, so just because you measure no wind speed now, does not mean that there's no wind speed ever. The resource tab in the lower half of the prospecting window shows the spread of each resource in your area. This is pretty self-explanatory, brighter colors means abundance, darker colors means a lack of. You can use prospecting to get an idea of how many nodes are in an area as well, such as uh, for iron or copper, or how much of a given resource is in the dirt in your area, which goes for fertility, stone and water. However, once you unlock greenhouse technology, you can safely ignore what type of biome you're settling in or the fertility of your local area, as greenhouses allow you to grow all crops at 100% efficiency. That being said, you do need water to farm, regardless of tech levels. Water is essential not just for farming, but also for cooking and distilling. You can get it from two main sources, groundwater using a well, or rain using a rain collector. Rain will also automatically water outdoor plants, so if you're growing your farm outside instead of a greenhouse, there is that to take into consideration. A well's effectiveness is based on the percentage of groundwater in your area. Again, closer to 100% is better, and generally speaking, the closer you are to an above-ground water source, such as a river or lake, the more groundwater will be in the area. Rain collectors, on the other hand, only function while rain is falling, which it doesn't do in certain drier areas of the world. Be warned that rain collectors do not function in areas with acid rain, though weirdly enough, acid rain will water outdoor crops. This could let you run an entire settlement on just acid rain, but not comfortably, as you won't be able to cook anything that uses water in the recipe, nor will you be able to distill alcohol for a profit. You will also want to consider stone when building a base. Stone is only used for the creation of building materials, but building materials are used in the construction of nearly all outdoor structures. So having a source of stone in your base makes a huge difference in the speed and efficiency with which you can build stuff up. It works just like groundwater in that certain areas have more stone than others, with rockier mountainous areas having more stone than wetlands or beaches. Even so, if you decide to skimp on one resource, stone is probably the easiest to miss. Your base doesn't have a constant need for it, unlike the other resources, you just need a lot of it initially and then only more of it as you decide to expand your town. Finally, you'll want to consider your neighbors when settling an area. You can generally assume that anything hostile you encounter in that area, as well as neighboring areas, will occasionally launch attacks against your base. In or near the border zone, you'll frequently be raided by hungry bandits or dust bandits, which isn't a big deal since they just intend to rob you, not wipe you out. If you settle near a swamp, you'll have to deal with frequent raids from the criminal ninja gangs that live there, and occasionally a ravenous swarm of blood spiders who will absolutely eat everyone in your base if it's not defended properly. If for whatever reason you're insane enough to try and build a base inside the crater, expect to be constantly fighting for your life against packs of beak things. Also, some factions are easier to settle near than others. The Western Hive and Nomads won't care if you settle near them, and will even send merchants over every so often to see if you want to trade. The Shek Kingdom and the United Cities aren't hostile but will demand occasional taxes in exchange for living near their land. The Holy Kingdom is friendly as long as you have a Greenlander or Scorchlander with the Holy Flame Book on them to greet them with, but even that might not keep them happy with you if they happen to see a hiver peeking over your walls. As such, think carefully where you want to settle. Some places are really easy to build in, like the border zone, and other areas are downright inhospitable to life, like the Deadlands or the Crater. As a general rule, make sure the area has at least one iron node, one copper node, enough fertility to support farming, at least until you research greenhouses, a source of water, 
and enough stone in the ground to let you construct building materials independently. 